We now turn our attention to a huge week in the Canadian Championship. In fact, you could argue this is the biggest week ever for the Canadian Premier League. It is a doubleheader on Wednesday night, and it starts at Stad Saputo on Wednesday. We'll start the preview for that as you look ahead. Wednesday, Stad Saputo, CF Montreal against Forge. Uh, let's bring in our own Charlie O'Connor Clark, who will be covering this match in uh, in Montreal as Forge FC. I think really start to think, Charlie, that this could be their moment. Now, we're going to get into this in detail, the history of all this in, in a second. Um, but let's just talk about what we were talking about in the in the week six recap show there for a minute uh, and the conversion of chances. Should that be mm. their major concern heading into this game, that Forge have probably not been clinical enough? Uh, and if those chances come, whether it be one or whether it be six, uh, they've got to be more clinical in front of goal. Yeah, I think that's a, well, it's a concern every time a CPL team goes up against an MLS team because that, that's one of the biggest differences. Right when you go and play at that at that level as a CPL team, is that in a, a CPL game you might get three or four of those chances. Right. Uh, against an MLS team, you will probably get one. And if you don't score it, then that's it. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and I think Forge know that though. Forge are aware. You know they 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 remember maybe not their game in Montreal last year, but their game against Montreal the year before, uh, where they didn't take their chances. Uh, it ended up going to penalties, and you know it it didn't work out for them <laughs> after eleven shooters. But um, I I think that that it will be kind of the the main focus for them this week. Uh, I I think you probably will. I I have to think you probably see Wubens Passius start up front. I think he's probably been the most clinical of of the Forge strikers so far this year, uh, and he's got a, a track record with this team for scoring right. in big moment moments. Uh, including in, in the semifinal last year of the CPL. Um, but I, I do think that will be the key for Forge is that they might not have the ball a ton in this game. They'll, they'll probably have, have a decent amount because they always do, no matter who they're playing. Um, they will probably have a couple chances and they know that you know they can't waste them. They can't be uh, looking for to move the ball around to, to higher quality areas. You just have to pull the trigger sometimes when you do get to those areas. And I think that will be something that's it's kind of a focus for Bobby Smirniotis in training this week. And you mentioned that a little bit in your campiel.ca piece this week and the in-depth analysis of their tactical attack and how versatile they can be. So check out that piece now mm-hmm. on campiel.ca by Charlie. Um, Charlie also mentioned their past performances. Montreal, a familiar opponent now for this team. Here's Cal Becker on some of those past performances that Forger played in the Canadian Championship. I think it's a, a competition we want to we want to do well in. Um, I feel like we've been a little hard done by, lots of penalties twice. It's a fantastic opposition, but um, at the end of the day, we've gone into those games and we've we've kind of put our stamp on it. We didn't really just sit back and absorb pressure. We tried to implement how we played, and, and we had success for it. So I think we can be proud of the performances that we've had in this competition and against the fantastic opponents that we've had in, in TFC and Montreal. It's massive. I think uh, anytime when you're a player. I, I can't speak to it enough. It's you want to play against the best players. You want to test yourself. So, I think we have a, a lot to be proud of. But yeah, definitely, I think there's a hunger and there's a desire to to keep pushing the envelope and, and do better. Now, one of the games that Becca didn't mention there was last year in CF Montreal, where Forge went high, with high hopes, but in the end. Uh, I think re- very rarely, one of the very few times you can ever remember in the history of this club, came off the pitch at the end of it, really not showing anywhere near the best of themselves. Before we talk a little bit more about that and the rematch and poten- potential re- redemption from that, let's hear now about that game from Tristan Borges. Splits the seam. Montreal are in. Henry goes down, but he's beat clean. They've been strong. It was always one that they expected to win. It's one that they did win. Wilfred Nancy and company. You know, just being here the years that I've been at Forge, I would say that's probably one game that we really kind of just went off the field and we're like, it wasn't a game that, you know, we wanted to perform like like that, right? It's against a big team like like what Montreal is and, and, and us knowing what we're capable of doing and what we've been able to produce against big clubs already. I think that kind of left a bad taste in the mouth and it was it was tough to kind of, you know, get over and, and, and move on from that. But like I said, it's in the past, you know, uh, for us, it's just about looking forward and, and understanding we put ourselves in another situation to be in games like this. And I think, you know, at least the moments that I've been here already with Forge, it's, 
it's you know whenever you know big games you know come here especially in uh, you know in Hamilton but sometimes away as well I think we tend to perform in big games and you know hopefully it stays like that Borges is right. You expect them to perform in big games. They did not perform that day, Charlie, for whatever reason. Yeah. Is there something to be said that maybe Forge were more of a team in transition at that moment that weren't quite ready and that this time we feel like will be different? Yeah, that's it's weird because that's a game that I think at, at least I do and I think a lot of people in the CBL kind of just block out of their memory because it was just such a weird one where you expected a lot more from forge considering how close they'd come against montreal the year before obviously there's you know there's, there's no need for extra motivation but that but it was there uh but it it was a weird moment for forge obviously you know they, they'd had a, a a bit more of a a bit more turnover in the offseason than i think we really knew at the time i don't yeah. i don't think it, we really talked about it enough but like five players of the 11 that they started in that game in montreal were new to the club which and it was it was very early in the season uh, they still had Abubakar Sissoko playing right back in that game, I think. Um, Rezat Rama had been there a couple of weeks, I think, at that point. They were 2-2-2 two, two and two at that point. They were still, they were still figuring things out uh, in this, this, this kind of new look forge that you know, obviously is, is a much more refined version of it now as they come into this game. And, and I think this will be a very different forge that we see because, again, that was really maybe the only time I can think of in forges history where they've played they've come into a big game and, and just been flat yeah right I, I can't think of really a lot of other times that's ever happened for them so it was uncharacteristic and a strange time for the club at that point but I do think that I, I, I'd imagine there'll be a lot of similar players in the starting 11 uh, on Wednesday as there were in that game and they're miles further along I think than they were at that point last year so I think that there will be I mean, I, I hope at least you'll see a, a more a more coherent and, and a more you know prepared version of Forge for this game. Yeah, the outcome may be similar. I think the performance will be very different. Uh, yeah. that's, I think it's just clear. Uh, Forge, more than any team in the CPL, are creating real football heritage moments. Tons of reference points. You mentioned it. Big games. CONCACAF, CONCACAF League, Champions League, you know, Canadian Championship victories, and of course, North Star Shields. Um, and this really next is the next step for the development of that club. That That is what I posed when I asked Bobby Smirniotis that question here is what he told me. When you're, when you're building the culture and identity of a club and you're thinking long term, take all the, the big clubs around the world. Um, they've had uh, various defining moments, winning championships, overcoming something in a, in a European or South American uh, competition. So I think everything we can add you know, uh, adds to the mystique of this club down the road, and that there are these stories being told, not only of uh, championships won in the in the CPL, not only of journeys in CONCACAF and the, the different things that go along, uh, but there also is a trophy that represents this tournament in the cabinet. And I think that's what we want to do here long term, so long as I'm here, is cre keep on creating these stories as best as possible um, for the future generations. Incredibly powerful words, no? Uh, uh, he's, he's right, though, isn't he? This is their next frontier, no? This is the next yeah. one that they want. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that there's a lot that I can say that, that Bobby didn't say much better just then. Uh, Forge have been the first CPL team to do a lot of things, to, to win a championship, to you know go to CONCACAF, to play in the Champions League. They are desperate to be the first CPL team to win that Voyager's Cup. They came so close against TFC last year, uh, but this one would be different because it's a it's a full length Canadian Championship tournament. It's not just a, a one off final like it was last year. They've got so much experience now playing against these MLS teams after after a few years. They know what they need to do. They they're ready for it, and it, it is kind of that that frontier as as you said. It's obviously obviously the the canadian championship means a lot to a lot of players in this country there's players in that forged locker room that know what it means obviously players like like ashton morgan Kybecker that have won it before uh and want nothing more than to to win it for this club for this club that they've put so much commitment and effort into over the last few years so i think that it is a, really the the that is the, the prize right now and then once that tournament's over you turn back to the to the league but uh 
it's also the the earliest way that they can qualify for the Concacaf Champions League, yeah. which is also you know a, a massive massive priority for that club. So you know th- this is it. This is a big one. It's a big one, no doubt about it. Uh, we should say we know that there's a lot of players uh, who get paid a lot more money to play in MLS than this. We don't, we understand the task at hand. Playing away from home is even harder. Um, it's an enormous ask, and it should never be a given. Um, yeah. But what a chance Forge have got here. Uh, and we'll certainly see that in what will be a fantastic doubleheader starting on Wednesday. Uh, Charlie, we thank you. By the way, producer Benedict tells us it's three years today since the opening show of the CPL <laughs> newsroom now presented by Volkswagen. You were on that show, Charlie. So congrats on a the anniversary. <laughs> uh, thanks for all the work you continue to do. And uh, this is why we do it, right? For games like this. So enjoy it. And uh I will look forward to your analysis and thoughts on Wednesday's game uh, out of Montreal. And as usual, catch all Charlie's work at campl.ca. Thank you, Charlie. We appreciate you. And we'll speak to you next week. Um, For the second game, again, back-to-back on Wednesday, it is a rematch. It is the Whitecaps traveling to Starlight Stadium. And we all remember what happened there in 2021 when Pacific hosted them. That's right. Pacific knocked them out uh, in 2021. And to preview that game, let's bring in back our own Mitchell Tierney for the second of the doubleheader. Pacific against the Whitecaps. Mitch, Pacific are a team in really good form right now. And I think that's what makes this even more juicier. Know that, that we've got Forge and Pacific, one and two, best two teams on form right now in the CPL going against these MLS teams. Um, they're no stranger to big games in the past either, Pacific. Many of them, by the way, at home. Uh, is that the biggest storyline or what is the biggest storyline coming into this game? Well, I think part of it is just how much these two sides have changed since that 2021 matchup. I mean, you only got two guys on the Pacific side who started that match in Manny Aparicio and Josh Hurd, both who scored, by the way. So they've become uh, massive reference points uh, for what Pacific are trying to do and only five white caps who are returning from the starting lineup um, as well. So. Uh, I think for me, I spoke with James Merriman uh, this week, and he just talked at length about how important of a match that was that kind of transformed Pacific as a club, um, both off the field, you know, what we saw in the stands during that match, but also on the field, just the belief that they had in winning that match to then go on and later that season, you know, uh, lift the North Star Shields. Um, with this being such a change Pacific group, this could really be their transformational moment. Great and point. the moment that so many of these players... Um, who now pull on the you know the the purple uh, of Pacific um, have their chance to to beat the White Caps and you know it unlocks a final um, which would be massive for for them as well that they would host um, which which yeah obviously that's a that's a huge deal for the club so yeah I just think that this is their opportunity to um, have you know yet another moment that takes Pacific to to the next level and puts them back in that conversation maybe for for top clubs within Canada that they really want to be a part of. Yeah, some great points there. You mentioned it, James Merriman, no stranger, of course, as well. Former employee and coach at the Whitecaps as well. There's so many connections. That's what makes it such a great storyline. Uh, here's James Merriman on the history of Pacific within this competition. I think it's something for the fans to get behind. It's great. It's great for the game. The memories for me are, like I said to you before, a little bit challenging, a little bit difficult. We've had these these big games with the Whitecaps here at home, away to TFC, Last season, the, the loss to uh, York. Um, so we've had a lot of different experiences in the competition, which keeps us humble, hungry, knowing that it's one game. I mean, we love playing here too. Uh, I think we've got a great fan base that gets behind our team. We have a good energy here at home. Our players get up for it, especially the guys that have been here for a few years now. So we'd love to try and take advantage of the draw that we got. It's been a great draw, no doubt about it. Absolutely fantastic draw for them so far. Uh, they've already played four league games at home. They've already played two Canadian Championship games at home. Now they get to play at home again. And then they're at home again on the weekend. And some of the players didn't even go away from home. So they're doing everything they possibly can uh, to get the benefits here. Uh, we've talked a lot about this rivalry, Mitch. Obviously, we showed it there. They met in 2021. Do you think that's a help or a hindrance that this has already been done before? You know, in many ways, it's positive and a help for the Pacific. But on the Whitecap side, I know they keep talking about it, that they don't ever want to allow that to happen again. I think it's a help, but for two separate reasons. One, um, I think returning to Starlight Stadium, you know, there might be some negative history there for the Whitecaps. They've been pretty horrendous away from home uh, over the last little bit as well. I think it was June of 2022 that they won their their last uh 
MLS regular season match. And that was the last time in all competitions they won previous to going to York Lions Stadium um, to get into this round. So they really haven't uh, won much away from home recently. Um, but at the other end of the table, you know, this almost ensures that Vancouver Whitecaps will bring their best. And I think that's something that CPL clubs always talk about when they go into this competition is the opportunity to test themselves against these MLS sides. And so I think it's important that, you know, they don't play a Vancouver Whitecaps B side. They don't play a side that maybe aren't up to their top standard. Um, they play a Vancouver Whitecaps side that are ready and expecting a difficult performance. And if they can beat, you know, the best of the Vancouver Whitecaps, then that's the next step for the Canadian Premier League is, is that example. And that's the next step for these players is knowing they can step on that field against, you know, everyday starters for the Whitecaps and beat them. Yeah, you mentioned it. Some of those key players are in terrific form. Let's hear it from some of those specific ones now heading into this big clash. It gives a chance for teams like us to play against higher level MLS teams and, you know, like we saw in previous years, go on and beat them. It's different. It's different to league games where maybe a bit's more at stake. You don't have the opportunity to, to lose. You don't have a next game. Every game is a, a knockout game. Really, really badly just want to win. So whoever comes, I think we're prepared for anyone. We've shown we can play against MLS team, be an MLS team. We knocked out White Caps a couple years ago. I think we want to keep BC Pacific base and no other team around. So I'm excited for that matchup. We're hyped because we probably play to get in those academies. That's like a game you want to win and you want to show them what you can do and what they basically left out on. Knockout stages, right? Knockout rounds, and there's nothing more exciting than that. Those were the words of Easton Ongaro, Emil Gazdorf, Kunle Dadaluk, and Amir Didich. Uh, Dada Luke put it best there when he talked about players playing in academies and then getting to play them again. That is that is full of storylines across uh, all of CPL. We talked about it in the CF Montreal game against Forge, many of them as well. Uh, that's what's going to keep happening in this league. But that is just a spicy extra motivation for some of these players. No, Mitch? Oh, always. Uh, I think, you know, so many of these players believe that they should have been given the opportunity that they weren't by these clubs. And I think a lot of these players now given that sep second opportunity um, have gone on and proved that, that they should have been given those opportunities and have reached the next level, um, you know, be that in Europe or be that back in MLS with with different clubs. So, you know, there's a number of those players, you know, you talk about Sean Young, you talk about Kunle Dadaluk, these young guys who, um, you know, have so much potential. Now they'll get the opportunity to to really demonstrate that. And yeah, that's so much motivation. Um, and, and like you said, especially for those guys who, you know, are looking across the, the field at, you know, some of the, the coaching staff and some of the players that they came up with and who maybe didn't believe in them uh, to, to reach that next level. Yeah. And, and, one of those players is also East, uh, is uh, also Easton Garo, who played last year for the Whitecaps, and Kikuta Mane, who had a great career in MLS for the Vancouver Whitecaps and gets to go against them now. We're throwing all these names out, Mitch, but you know what? All of them can't start, and that's just what James Merriman's got on his hands. The depth mm -hmm. is incredible right now. You could make a case of playing Mane through the middle with Salouf and Hurd. You could play at Adonai Jarid as a false nine. Do you give Angaro the chance? Uh, I think we know Toussaint and Young and Manny Aparicio should play that three in midfield. Uh, we expect Didich and Amir Jagir, but that front line, they've got a lot to choose from here quickly. Yeah, I think that's exciting. Um, I think it also gives them the opportunity to shift things. You know, if they if they aren't going well or if they need an extra spark, you know, they can bring on different players. You know, Daniels is such a different number nine from Easton Ongaro. You know, Mane is a different winger. They, they just have so many different players who can do many different things. And, you know, that's part of what's led to their success so far in, in the CPL. And um, I think that's part of what might lead to their success against the Whitecaps is, you know, this is as deep of a Pacific side, at least in attack, as we've ever seen. Yeah, Mitchell's in-depth analysis piece on this team right now is available at campl.ca. Please catch that as well. Mitch, we appreciate you. We'll chat with you next week. Enjoy the games. It doesn't get much better than this. Folks, this will be special. Uh, it's a double header, but a rare double header. It's CPL versus MLS. It's the semifinals. It's on the same night, both games live on One Soccer, Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock Eastern, then 10 o'clock Eastern, of course, 7 o'clock Pacific at Starlight Stadium. Everyone knows the difference. Everyone knows the difference in budget. Uh, some players on an MLS squad earn more themselves than a CPL squad combined. But two wins from 18 attempts in the past, it's happened. CPL teams have defeated MLS teams. It has happened. 13, by the way, of those 18 games have been decided by one goal or less. It is tight. Both wins have come against the Whitecaps. So you're saying there's a chance? Absolutely there's a chance. It could be a historic week for the CPL. 
we leave with the final word for Pacific Skipper. Here's Josh Hurd. We've had historic nights at, at Starlight where it's been packed and, and we feel the energy of the crowd and we feel invincible at times when we're here. Um, but now we have to step out and do it. And I, I, think it's, I think it's time a CPL team wins the Canadian Championship. It hasn't been done yet and I think, uh, I think we're, we're poised to do it. Honestly, having that type of atmosphere, having, having a big team like the Whitecaps coming over and play, it's, it's, it's an easy game to get up for because as a player you want to play in big games. So yeah, hopefully we can make more memories like that here. And then right here you cue the clip of the goal.